Ibrahim Sangare, Tyler Adams and Ndidi are the shortlist for Nottingham Forest central defensive midfielder Hunt. But which one of them is actually the best? Let's get into it. Good morning, good evening, or good night, wherever in the world you are. Whatever time of day you're watching this, hope you're having a fantastic day. And welcome to this little special analysis podcast on which of the three Nottingham Forest targets are the best. As always, if you're new here, before we get into it, hit that like button. Subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, don't forget to give it a five star review. We're going to go through these players. What's been clear is that the CDM is a priority position for Nottingham Forest. And from all the CDMs in the world, these are the current three that are on the shortlist. Now, the one that is furthest down the line, as we've been talking about over the last week or so, is obviously Ibrahim Sangare. But Tyler Adams is still very strongly linked to Nottingham Forest. However, with his injury and the likelihood that he would miss out at the start of the season, he is probably in second place. And then you have Ndidi from Leicester. With them getting relegated, it could be quite easy business for Forrest to do. Each of them comes with a different price tag. Is Sangare coming in at the most expensive with a release clause of about 37.5 million euros, which is about, what, 34, 35 million pounds? You got Tyler Adams, who's rumored to have a release clause in somewhere in the 20s. We don't know exactly what it is. And then Ndidi would probably cost in and around 20 million. But how do these three players compare to each other? What we're going to do today, we're going to go through some analysis from a defensive point of view, from a passing point of view, and from an attacking point of view. Yes, I know that sounds weird, but their CDMs, the modern day CDM, can also get forward as well as being that anchor in front of the defensive line. So let's jump into it and let's get into some analysis. Okay, so let's kick it off with Ibrahim Sangare. And these are his stats. And all these stats will be per 90 in a game. As you can see, he's quite good at tackling. He puts in 2.6 tackles per 90. And of that, he gets on average 0.8 interceptions. And with his physicality and with his strength, tackling comes naturally to him. Although he can go in sometimes quite rashly, as we showed you guys, in our in-depth analysis of him the other day. He is very, very good. He's, he's, he reminds me a bit of a Vieira. Not that good, I know, but just to give you a slight comparison, quite leggy, quite powerful, and we'll talk about what else he can do in terms of on the pitch. But looking at it um, secluded into the defensive side of things, tackling top-notch, interceptions top-notch, blocks and clearances, 1.9 clearances per game blocks per game one and a half and he wins a decent amount of aerial battles because he is a tall lad as well so he'll get 1.5 in there as well overall he is probably not the highest stats and the other thing you want to consider as well is that he plays in the dutch league where the other two stats that we will look at will be obviously from the premier league for tyler adams and um and diddy but overall, this is the foundations of some really good stats. But if we have a look at that in compared to the other two players, and we'll move on next and talk about Tyler Adams, you will see that the, the figures slightly change into probably a better defensive-minded player. So let's have a look at Tyler Adams here. His tackling is at 3.7, a lot higher than what we just saw with... Um, with Sangare in terms of interceptions is 1.4 a game and he gets two blocks on average per 90 in each game clearances 1.2 and aerials one 1.0 and this is probably his biggest weakness because he's not very tall he's very aggressive a bit like a, a little terrier getting in and around that middle kind of uh, part of the pitch can be quite aggressive but overall, he is a solid CDM and probably defensively wise is better than Sangare when it comes to that. But 
I like him. The only problem we've got, as I mentioned at the start of the video, is this injury that he hasn't been able to shake off. The hamstring injury that he picked up towards the middle of last season is causing him problems. Now, moving on to Wilfred Ndidi. And this is your out-and-out -out CDM. You will see that these stats are actually pretty good. In a season, though, where you have to add a relegation battle. So very similar to Tyler Adams. He was an absolute brick wall in terms of getting those tackles in. Averages 3.3, which is the highest of the three of them. Interceptions, averages 2.0 per 90. Blocks, 1.7. Clearances, 2.6. And he wins an okay amount in the air, just in the middle there between Sangare and Tyler Adams at 1.3. So if Cooper is looking for a complete out-and-out -out CDM, someone who's just going to anchor and sit in front of that defensive line, then on those stats, and Diddy wins out because he is the, the old school orthodox, if you like, CDM. And at the cheapest price of the three, if that's what Cooper wants, it might not be a bad investment at all. However, his form last season wasn't quite up to his normal past standards. and We did see a dip in it. But is that form the reason Leicester went down? I'll leave that to the Leicester fans to let you know. But let's move on now and have a look at something that's just as interesting, which is their passing stats. Okay, so with the passing stats, let's have a look at them in reverse order. And let's bring in Ndidi first. And Ndidi, as you can see here from the stats last season, passes attempted were 48 per game. Passes completed were at 83.9%, which actually isn't the highest that we're going to see. But at the same time, it's quite high in comparison to the actual passes completed you would see in your normal Nottingham Forest team. So he would, if he were to come in, come in at towards the higher end of those passing stats. His progressive passes are at 2.7 a game, and his progressive carries are only at 0.6, with successful take-ons, i.e. trying to dribble past someone, only at half per game. So again, this underlines what you will get with Ndidi is defensive mindedness completely sound. When it comes to that starting and ticking over on the turnover of, say, the counter attacks, he's not best suited to that. He's probably better off being one of those players that would lay it off to his number eight in midfield or maybe even go back to the defense. So if Cooper's looking for that CDM to be a destroyer and then the trigger point for a counter-attack, then Ndidi's stats don't really weigh up to it. And maybe, although his defensive stats are fantastic, attacking-wise, he can't provide that catalyst to turn it over into an attack. Okay, let's move on and have a look at Tyler Adams. And you can see there's already a bit of an improvement when it comes to the passing side of the number six's game. You can see here, passes attempted 56 versus Ndidi's, I believe it was 48, already higher up on that. Passes completed are slightly down. He was playing, uh, as he was passing more within the game, obviously you would expect that to come down slightly, but you're talking only a couple of points on the percentages there. His progressive passes, though, are a lot higher, 5.7 per 90 minutes. And his progressive carries, a little better, not great, at 0.8 and his successful take-ons are only at 0.3. So overall, these stats would dictate that he is a better starter of a counter-attack than the likes of Ndidi. So although Ndidi was renowned better for breaking up the gameplay, Tyler Adams can do that, not to the extent of Ndidi. But when it comes to that turnover, his stats would indicate that he is a lot better at it than the Leicester player. Now, if we move into Ibrahim Sangera, and just remember these stats, you can always obviously pause, go back and look at them. Have a look at these stats. Ibrahim Sangera. Now, I will add the old caveat on this that he is playing in the Dutch league. If you want to take that into consideration, entirely up to you. But passes attempted are 60.7, way, way higher than the others. Passes complete pretty much the highest of them all at 83.7%. But it's this one, the progressive passes, 7.6%.
blows the other two completely out of the water. And not only that, his progressive carries are over 1, 1 1.2 per game, and successful take-ons 1.3. I know this is in the Dutch league, but these progressive carries and successful take-ons are dictated by his physicality and his ability to control the ball and hold the ball close to him and kind of hold off any defensive players coming his way. And this is why he is the best out of the three when it comes to passing. And the trigger point in turning that defensive um, moment into a counter-attacking, attacking moment, you would have to give this one to Sangere by an absolute mile of the three. Even if you were to take a little off to account for the Dutch league, etc., and the fact that PSV are higher up the league, so you'd expect them to have a lot more ball possession, you can still see the mentality and the way he plays. Get the ball, break up the play, look up, look for a quick pass, get that turnover going. And this would probably suit Nottingham Forest very, very nicely indeed. So that's the defensive side of it. That's the passing side of it covered. When it comes to the final third and the attacking side of it, which one of the three actually looks the best? Okay, so let's start again with Ndidi on the attacking side of things. And there's not much to shout about here at all. Last season for Leicester, goals, zero. Assists, zero. Games, uh, key passes per game, 0.1. And dribbles per game, 0.4. This again underlines what I've said about him throughout this video. He's an anchor. He's literally the anchor man, man. Call him Will Farrell if you want. He is going to play in front of that defensive line and hold station. Maybe progressing towards the halfway line, etc. Maybe that is what Cooper wants. A man who can hold the play and then release the rest of the midfielders and still have that space covered could suit Cooper's plan. So you do understand why Ndidi is on Nottingham Forest shortlist. But overall, if you're expecting your number six from here to get you anything at all in terms of goals or assists, then Ndidi is not your guy. Moving on to Tyler Adams. Again, a very similar story to Ndidi. You'd have to say, not that great either. Zero goals, zero assists, shot per game 0.2, and key passes per game just under one at 0.9, and dribbles per game only at 0.3. Again, a little more progressive than Ndidi, but not much difference between the two in terms of that trigger point in turning defense into attack. So those two, I would say there's not too much difference with them in the attacking third of the game. But where this does heat up is where we start to move into Sangare. And again, for the like hundredth time this video, what I will say is he's playing in the Dutch league. So this you would probably expect. But from your number six, this is really high. Sangare, nine goals last season, two assists, shots per game 1.2, key passes per game 0.9, and dribbles per game 1.2. These stats look more like a number eight than a number six, so you do have to take into account that PSV are a decent team. But it also shows his understanding of how to play on the pitch. A number six the new modern number six shouldn't just be sitting in front of the defensive line. They should be pressing higher up the pitch to win the ball higher so that the turnover chokes the opposition into their own half. And if this is what Cooper wants to build towards, and I really hope he does, Forrest playing higher up the pitch into the opponent's half. Now, obviously not necessarily against your Man Cities and Arsenals, etc., but against those teams in and around us, having someone like Ibrahim Sangere would absolutely scare the crap out of any opposition team, especially when he's right in there, in and around the halfway line, just getting the turnover, playing those quick passes, those progressive passes forward and through. It's really going to cause the opposition some issue. So overall, although Sangere doesn't win any of the overall stats, he does cover the, he does win, so to speak, if you put all three of them together and look at which is the best player. So let's do a quick side by side analysis just to kind of summarize all of this. 
Okay, so here's a little visual chart to help you understand exactly how good they all look in which department. And you can see, as I just previously mentioned, Sangare is green in pretty much all three segments. Passes, tackling, um, attacking. He is the all-rounder number six. These stats, by the way, are against the other midfielders in the top five leagues and against the um, how they performed in the Champions League and the Europa Cups as well. And you can see Sangara. If, if there's going to be many number sixes ahead of him, I'll be very surprised. Both Ndidi and Tyler Adams cope, uh, well, stack up very well on the tackles, interceptions, blocks, etc. But when it comes to those passes and when it comes to the attacking third of the pitch, they are not even in the same postcode area as Sangare. So overall, I would like to ask you guys, based on what you've just seen there, which of the three would you pick if you were Steve Cooper and assume they all would love to join Nottingham Forest? And why wouldn't they? We're the best club in the world. Would it be Ibrahim Sangare? Would it be Tyler Adams? Or would it be Ndidi? And just as a quick reminder, Ibra um, Ibrahimovic, <laughs> Ibrahim Sangare is about £35 million. Tyler Adams, let's call him £25 million for now. And Ndidi would cost us in around, in around £20 million. And the question you really need to ask yourself, do you want a complete number six who can attack? Or would you prefer a number six who sits in, in front of that defensive line? Or would you want someone who sits in there but can progress into the midfield? Those are the key questions you need to ask yourself before you make a decision and get your answers in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this type of video, please don't forget to leave a like if you haven't already. Subscribe to FFTV if you are new. It's youtube.com slash at forestfantv. And we will see you on the next video and podcast. Come on, you Reds.